Hello and welcome to Charlie's desk. So today on the desk we have a very special entry. It is 113 years old from 1907 and it is the Perkins Braille Writer Model A. Um, it's, this is Perkins' first attempt at a, at a Braille writer made by the Howe Press right after Edward Allen, the third director of Perkins, took over. And he was a pro Braille guy, and, you know, he took over in 1906, and this comes out in 1907, so you kind of got to think eh, he had some influence there. Um, so I'll just start describing it. First of all, you know, uh, picking it up in the hands, it's about, uh, or I read it, 16 pounds, so it's pretty heavy. Um, the the body of the brailler is metal painted black and the carriage um, which holds the paper and moves through um, the braille writer a lot like a typewriter would is kind of a nickeled aluminum and then there's some steel bars. It's great. So I'll just start describing it. Um, I, I think I like have had a, a flaw in my describing because um, I haven't been using my hands enough and moving through it it like that. I think that will guide me and I'm kind of excited for that today. And that's kind of one really important thing about Braille um, and why Braille won over other um, raised types is because it's really the language of the fingers. Um, other attempts at a tactile raised print for the blind, they're all based on the Roman alphabet of lines, and they were just kind of the raised lines of the letters. Sometimes they were simplified a little bit, and the first director of Perkins, Samuel Gridley Howe, he invented Boston line type, so he thought that was the best. So um, Perkins didn't really fully embrace Braille until Edward Allen in 1906. Um, anyways, getting distracted. All right, so... Um, as the brailler touches the ground the f on the front part of it, it's like a low metal tray that bows out, bows out towards you. And then um, I bring my fingers up to the keyboard and uh, the keys are made of wood and it's really smoothed out. And then the space key is kind of the width and length of two fingers put together and it's a uh, not wood it's metal it's that and it's like dull and old looking and then with my pinky on the left hand there's a little um backspace key so that's pretty cool it's still still working um I took it apart a little bit and I'll, and I'll take it apart to show what's inside it as I keep going and describing it though okay so I have my um my keys on the, my fingers on the keys. And then I bring them up. Um, and like the front sort of like wall of the brailler, it's like, I don't know, four, four fingers high, two, three inches high. Um, and on that front face, the keys stick out. Oh, and the, the keys are on little like metal levers. So if I put my fingers underneath the keys there, I just feel the thin metal levers that the, um, the wooden keys are mounted to and then those keys are sticking out of it's basically just a uh, rectangular uh, piece of metal um, that's the full length of the brailler and it's only three inches high how long how, how wide is the brailler it is oh wow on um, the body of it's like only 11 inches wide the carriage is probably like 14 inches wide um, but so if I am on the top edge of the brailler, I bring my hands to the middle, then there's this arch that goes over, and this is called, um, uh, it's an arched die box. Uh, um, it kind of, the, the way I was thinking about describing it is almost like um, if you've ever thought about like an elephant drinking water and then throwing its trunk up to like splash water on its back. The arch die box kind of looks like an elephant's trunk and it, it goes over the carriage and, it, and it's above the embossing head where the dots um, come up. And so that 
uh, the, the die box is the little impressions. And so there's like, you know, the paper is sandwiched in between that and it makes the dots. So, um, and then I'll bring my hands up to the, the carriage. Um, I can feel on the underside of it kind of like this dull sawtooth um, advancing mechanism. Um, the patent knobs are, I can't tell if they were like painted. I think they were painted black, but they're, they're wood. Um, the carriage release is on the left-hand side and it's a nice mechanism. You pinch it with your thumb and forefinger and then you can slide it all away. Um, and it also, that pinch, if you, it, you can just, it, it, it advances the line. Um, so that's kind of like the outside of it. And then we can, we can go inside because it's pretty easy to um, take apart. So this is when I can talk about history, when I'm unscrewing uh, the four screws that hold in the, the front piece of the Briller. Um, okay, so Samuel Gridley Howe, right? Uh, founder of Perkins, um, does a lot of things. Uh, it educates Laura Bridgman, who is the first deafblind child in America to be educated. Um, and his son-in-law, Michael Anagnos, um, was the second director. And so the kind of tactile writing, I might have already said it, that Samuel Gridley Howe liked was Boston line type, but that was, um, you know, it was lines and the language of the fingers, it really is dots. Um, so that didn't work so great, but maybe because, you know, he was his son-in-law, he had a little bit of reluctance about changing his father-in-law's legacy. So Boston line type, stuck around at Perkins for a long time, even though the Howe Press was selling Braille music, um, it seems like during the Anagnos years. Um, so, and, and he had a lot of like Greek religious texts produced in Braille. So he was definitely on Braille side, but maybe it was complicated for him. Um, and then Edward Allen in 1906 takes over. He had been teaching at the Philadelphia School for the Blind where they were using Braille. Um, he grew up as kind of like a teacher at Perkins and then went off to do his own thing. Okay, so I've unscrewed um, the front plate and die box. That's sort of elephant trunk thing that I was talking about. And I'm gonna take it off, so there it is. The front plate has um, a bunch of different like channels cut in it uh, for the levers to go through. And I'll just put that to the side. It's cast, it's it's a p thin piece of metal tacked to a cast iron die box. It's a cast iron arch. And then on the underside at the end of it, kind of where I guess an elephant's nostrils would be, there's the six uh, little braille uh, indentations. There's the cell. Okay, I'll just put this I'll put this to the side. Um, and we can take a closer look at the mechanisms around the, the key and everything like that. Okay, so uh, the, you can see that all the levers are uh, attached to little springs, which is attached to a bar that runs above the whole key board, and that's why they pop back up. Um, and the, the bummer with what's, well, it's not that much of a bummer. Um, I'll take the, the carriage out. So the carriage, if I put my hands on either side of the brailler at the back, I can feel kind of like, almost like a, a canyon sort of, that the carriage, which is holding the paper, slides through. Um, so I'm holding the brailler up to uh, the this, this, this side so you can kind of see this canyon of sorts that the carriage goes through. Um, and the way that uh, the rest of it is made, and I think that's how they kept down the weight, is it's, it's cut sheets of metal that are bolted together. So if I turn it upside down, um, you, have, you have the shape of the bottom of the brailler. It's just a rectangle with a bowed front. Um, and you can see it's black painted metal. <laughs> and uh, there's bolts holding it in. And then if I hold it to the side, you can see that there's just a, and then they, they bent it on right angles and they drilled holes and they screwed it together. So um, the key levers, um, they all radiate 
inwards in kind of a triangular way. Um, and that is where they power the sort of pistons that go up um, to make the braille dots. So when I press the keys, these little kind of pistons go boop. And they're all still working, which, which is great. Um, so yeah, I took out the, the carriage, didn't I? So the carriage is pretty cool. Um, it has like a, a metal scroll holder. It's the, it's called the patent in typewriter language, but there's like a, a, a wooden dowel inside, um, this tube, this metal tube with an opening. And then there's kind of a, a roller thing that you, it kind of sandwiches the paper and feeds it in there. And then on sort of the top of the canyon, there's steel bars with little, with little ball bearings set in them, which is like really fancy. Um, so the carriage moves pretty smoothly. Um, and then, oh yeah, on the, on the APH website, they're like, um, this key isn't working, so we're not sure what it does. So I'm just doing a real close-up video of the mechanics now. And you can see when you uh, push down the key, it almost pushes forward like this little tongue thing that um, pushes the carriage back. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's also on a little spring. Oh, so the thing that isn't working about this, the reason why it's not, you know, advancing is because... Um, in all brailers, there's like, or brailers that are sort of more typewriter style with, um, you know, a carriage that moves through it. There's something like a tension thing to keep tension on the carriage so it will move forward. And this one, um, sort of mounted on the inside of the canyon, there's a, there's a wheel and there was something wrapped around that wheel that was then connected to the carriage that kept tension on it. So each time you um, press the space key, you know, the, um, the the carriage will advance. And I think there's a pretty decent, decent view of sort of like, so yeah, the, there's like a bar um, on the front face of the carriage that kind of has um, like, you know, teeth. And then there's like, a little here. I guess I'll I go figure out what a could be so I can be thinking about it. So, yeah, there's like a little tooth that um, you know would provide resistance to um, the the sawtooth above it. But when you press the space key, the resistance disappears, so um, the tension can kind of you know pull the uh, carriage forward and the paper and move the paper forward. So, so yeah, that is. Um, that's what's kind of inside it. It's really fun. Um, I love the wooden keys. Um, I love that there is still this old, um, sort of gold writing on the front of it that's called Japaning. Um, I really like how the front, you know, bows out towards you sort of like you know, on the front of a stage almost. Um, yeah, and it's and it's a cool part of history. I mean, I think I think it was made at the Howe Press. Um, I'm not sure how many were made. They, I, I'm not sure when they moved on to the model, the Model B. You know how quickly they they went that way, um, and then to the C. Um, at the same time. Uh, the AFB put out um, a new brailler, the Foundation Writer, which was pretty popular. You know, the Hall Braille Writer. You know, this is is quieter, I think, than than uh, the Hall Braille Writer. I think people felt like the Hall Braille Writer was loud, which I get. Um, you know, but it's totally rad. So. So this is very cool, and, and I, I would want to find more information about it. Um, I wonder what is in the Perkins archive about this, whether there's any sort of notes on its production, because, you know, some of the information that I've been mentioning um, in this video is from this book called The, the History of the Howe Press, 
um, that I found in an archive. Um, and, you know, they kind of skip over. They kind of skip over this thing. They're like, yeah, they kind of messed around with some brailers, but, you know, it says the Model C was, um, you know, still for, for sale as late as uh, 1933. Um, so, um, and then, you know, it wasn't, wasn't till a different um, headmaster took over that uh, Perkins, you know, ended up achieving uh, such success with the their Braille Rider, which is now just the dominant Braille Rider. Um, and so that's like been part of the Charlie's Desk project a little bit is to just, um, you know, see what else is out there and um, talk about sort of the history of, of Braille because, you know, it wasn't, gosh, was it 19... It's a it's a living language, right? That we all have, and so Braille must, you know, change and 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 accommodate things. And there's all kinds of, you know, governance organizations for um, UEB Unified English Braille, at least, you know. And then there's other Braille codes for every language. So I'm really struggling to like get the die box back in, but maybe I should just kind of like relax for a second, you know? Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, needs four screws because there's a lot of pressure exerted upwards by the little piston pins that are making the braille. And so, um, yeah, you need, you need four points where you're securing it, otherwise it would rock back and forth. So I'm, I called the typewriter store to see um, if they have a spring that could maybe work or something like that. Um, because I, I think one of the things about the Hall Braille Writer is that, like, they, they, they didn't use, they custom made, like, everything. So, I mean, if you're taking the principles of a typewriter, you might as well use some commonly available parts, too, you know? So I think that that was something that they were going for, too, is ease of repair, and at least... You know, for me, it's it hasn't been hard to take it apart. So there we go. I'll load some paper into it. The paper scroll is just like minuscule. Oh, it fits, you know, it fits the 11 and a half inch of paper, right? So you can get your 41 rail cells in. Perfect. And, um, oh, I'll do the carriage release. Oh, there's also like little margin guiders you can see that for most of the life of this brailler which came from warren michigan who knows where it originally was from the uh the margin guide was set to eight and a half by 11 um paper so um let's see Ooh. i'll start over here and then i can provide the potential so, there we go i'm just gonna yeah. my name oh come on yeah, it's 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 embossing, which is which is exciting. So, you know, 113 late years later, maybe 120. Who who knows? We're not exactly sure when this was made. Oh, actually, no. I, I'm thinking the APH has it right. So, 1907. Um, but um, pretty cool. Um, just was was excited to to get to look into all this Perkins stuff. It's a uh, you know, it's there's so much history there. It's it's a little bit intoxicating, um, especially like in their research library is so cool. They have such incredible um, resources there. It's a little sad that um, you know people don't have access to that right now for obvious reasons. But um, it's just something very cool part of history. So that is the Perkins Braille Writer Model A. Still pretty much working, just needs a spring or like, I don't know, something. Thanks for watching, bye.